Good morning. Well, I've just spent the night at uh, the moorings just under Holston Junction, so I am just about to enter the Llangollen Canal. Now, this is a canal I have wanted to do ever since, well, before I even bought a boat, actually. Um, you know, when I had the idea of buying a boat um, and I was looking at the canals, this was the one I most wanted to do, so I am really quite excited about getting onto this canal. Let's hope it meets up with my expectations. So it's under bridge 97 and hang a sharp lefty. In this episode, I'll be tackling the Holston lock flight, having a meditative moment whilst making lunch, a beautiful visitor comes on board, there's a cracking good storm, and I chill my way up the Llangothen. I've just tied up on the lock landing, now there are four locks on this flight, um, and then, well, it's on to Renbury, I guess. Hulston locks were built in 1805. The locks at Frankton and Hurlston were the first to use a mixture of wood and iron gates and, as such, have been granted Grade 2 listed status. You may notice the top gate on Lock 1 is made of wood, whereas the bottom two are made of metal. On Lock 2, all the gates are metal, and on Locks 3 and 4, the top gates are both metal and the bottom gates are both wood. Lock one, and the only lock ladder was near the top gate, so I had to take my bow line up with me. I'm filling the lock slowly, as the water flow in lock chambers on different canals can behave quite differently. There is quite a pronounced sill, and I'm not yet sure how the boat will move in the chamber. Lock 1 was closed from November 2019 till March 2020 as the south wall of the chamber had bowed quite severely. A concrete retaining wall has been built and inserted to stabilise the ground and this has been faced with a mixture of the original brickwork and newer bricks. Well, that's the first lock just about done and it started to rain so I've had to change my footwear because the other shoes I was wearing are quite slippery in the wet. Um, and yeah, you know, anyone would think I'm heading into Wales. It started to rain. On lock two, I saw this piece of timber. Hmm, firewood I thought. But no, it's needed to hold the gate open. the four Holston locks done and now I feel I am properly on the Llangotten Canal. How wonderful! It seems like it's been a very long time coming. There are two uh, water points at the top of the Holston Lock Flight, so I thought I'd take advantage and top up with water while I'm here. Uh, and also, have a beverage of finest old grey tea. Why not? Need it after that Lock Flight. And it's still raining. I stopped for lunch just beyond Bridge 3. I was struck by the colour of the grasses and the motion of the boat out of the galley window. Extremely calming. Almost mesmeric. I have to say, what a delight it is to be on the move again. Absolutely amazing. I have missed this so much and 
even though I've only been on this canal for a mile and a bit, it is really stunningly beautiful so far and I believe it probably gets a lot better. So I'm looking forward to the rest of the trip. Now one of the noticeable things about the Llangothen Canal is the water flow. There's quite a, quite a heavy water flow from west to east and this is because the canal is actually fed by the River Dee. Um, and it's most noticeable when you go sort of uh, through un under bridges, bridge holes and tunnels and stuff like that. It's, um, uh, yeah, you can give the boat as many revs as you like, but it ain't going to go any faster. So uh, you just end up using more diesel doing it like that. And whilst we're on that point, it has been said, um, and obviously I don't know whether it's true yet, but uh, it takes a third longer to get up to Llangothen than it does going back the other way. And that is purely because of the water flow. Every day, some 62 million litres of water flows down the canal. What I'm tending to do is to put the pointy end into the bridge hole and then knock it into neutral and then you drift through. Um, that way you're just not using as much diesel uh, and you're going just as fast to be honest. The extremely large Swanley Marina with moorings for over 300 boats. Another feature of the Llangosson locks is the extremely strong bywash. Hmm, had this before on the Huddersfield Narrow. Above me, an aerial duel takes place as a crow protects its young by mobbing a buzzard. Polo ponies graze the field near Bridge 10. This looks like a pretty good place to spend the night. So the sea hooks go into the arm cut. Now, please tell me, why is it every time you moor up or you try to slip your moorings, a boat seems to come past? It's all the sod, isn't it? Every time you gnaw up, someone comes past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we've all been in that position, haven't we? And luckily, I'd spotted that the sea hook had come out of the armco.
Now this really is a cracking mooring. I must admit, I had a rather stunning visitor on the boat that evening. A common blue damselfly. I stayed in the mooring another day, but that evening storm clouds gathered and the thunder rolled in from the north and the east. The following morning, all was pastel and calm again, and dog rose, freshly flowered along the towpath. and by the time I was in the lock chamber, a helping hand had arrived. Notice the offside paddle wasn't working, which meant it took longer to fill the lock. And good to see someone using hand sanitizer whilst using the locks.
we still need to be cautious about COVID-19. I always think it's a good idea to swing the tiller to the side when in a lock, just in case you get swept backwards and your rudder gets caught in between the gates. Yes, I do have a decent sized stern fender, but hey, you can never be too cautious. The mooring that evening was close to Renbury Church Lift Bridge. And there'll be more on lift bridges in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching, and as usual, please press the uh, thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe, that would be brilliant. See you next time. Bye.